Good evening and welcome to Inside the VI here at the Nanaimo Ice Center, the home of the Nanaimo Buccaneers. The Buccaneers tonight are taking on the Campbellverse Storm. Tonight's guests are Campbellverse Storm's head coach and general manager Lee Stone and Gage Copran. We've got news, scores and more. This is Inside the VI. Hello and welcome to Inside the VI. I am now joined with Campbell River Storm head coach and general manager Lee Stone and Gage Copern after a 4-2 win in the Nanaimo Buccaneers. Uh, two goals, how does it feel? Uh, it feels great, you know, I got a road win like that, two points. It always feels good. Lee, you start the season off 5-0, and you know, there's not much better can get. Uh, but talk about some of the flaws that you guys have to work on still. Well, uh, two games in a row we've been scored on in the first minute. So for us, we want to focus on having a better start. And, uh, you know, obviously 5-0, and we're real happy with that. But I think we want to get better every game that we play. And, and part of that is starting strong and finishing strong. So there's definitely some areas. I think special teams we probably need to get a little bit better at. But with how much practice time, we'll take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be ready for, uh, for Oceanside tomorrow night. Uh, Gage, you won the provincial championship two years ago. Talk about that. Uh, we had a pretty solid team and you know we just bonded really well and I think uh, kind of reminds me of this season so far guys are getting together really well and uh, feeling good. Uh, Lee, not to put you on the spot or anything, talk about why you decided to have Gage Copern on your team. Uh, Charlie Hustle, I mean he's a hard working kid. Uh, for me the, the first and foremost we look for in any player is character and, and Gage has that in spades. Uh, we talked to his old midget coach before we recruited him last year and you know, his coach had nothing but great things to say and, and I'm the same. I mean we love having Gage around and I think it speaks volumes that as a 19 year old uh, he's wearing an A on our team when everyone else is 20 years old. Uh, Gage, we're going to talk a little bit off hockey for a moment. Uh, we won't say this too, too loud. Uh, you're a Chicago Blackhawks fan. Why? Uh, Honestly, when I was 11 years old, the uh, Portland Winter Hawks came in and played my hometown, the Kelowna Rockets, and I said, Dad, those are the coolest jerseys ever. And he said, well, there's an NHL team just like them, Gage, and I looked him up, and, well, I knew them already, and uh, just started loving them from there on. So when you're growing up, Mary Lemieux was your favorite player, now it's Jonathan Taze. Uh, you know, do you kind of idolize your game after Jonathan? Yeah, I do. The only difference is that he's a lefty, but, I mean, I still love him. He's a complete player, and that's what I'm trying to be every night. Uh, last season, you played six games to the Power of Kings. Talk about playing at the junior A level. Uh, it's tough, you know, it's fast hockey and, uh, you know, you got to be mentally prepared for every game there, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for sure. Uh, Lee, Lee, sorry, from aside from Calvary Storm, you're an ASU scout. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, well, I played at Arizona State for a year and, and obviously know Greg Powers, the head coach there very well. I've sent probably a dozen players down there over the last five years. And uh, last year I had two or three guys that I helped recruit on the national championship team. So it's something that, uh, you know, I obviously speak pretty fondly of. My time down there was pretty incredible. and and Greg Powers is a great mentor to me, so I just try to help wherever I can. So Gage's favorite team is Chicago Blackhawks. Who's your favorite NHL team and why? Uh, the Canucks, hometown team. I think Gage uh, probably jumped on the bandwagon. I think he's lying about getting there at, at 11. He probably did it after they won the two cups. But uh, you know, I threw and through Canucks fan. I mean, uh, with them with the hard times and the good times, even though there haven't been too many good times recently. So. Talk about the expectation this season. You had a great season last year, but didn't complete the goal of winning the VI. Talk about this uh, expectation this season. Well, it's simple. It's a VIJHL championship, and, and probably more importantly, it's a provincial and Western Canadian championship. And I, I think we have the talent here to do that. And, uh, you know, obviously with the returning veteran core that we have, the leadership is in place. And, uh, you know, obviously for us, it's one game at a time, maybe even a smaller sample size. It's one period at a time. And we're really trying to focus less on the end goal and more about the process and how we get there. And uh, you know, I think it's been successful so far, and hopefully we keep trending in the right direction. Uh, on the offseason, you got announced general manager of the Storm. Talk about that feeling about being announced GM as well. well. I think it was the next step in my career. I mean, uh, you know, obviously last year Kevin and I worked really closely on the roster, and, and this year it's a, it's a role I wanted to take in terms of some of the off-ice duties. Uh, you know, I have hopes and dreams just like these guys do, and, you know, I want to coach and, and general manage at the next level and hopefully the NHL one day. And I think adding that to my resume is, is a big thing. And, and obviously, uh, in terms of the team, I think, you know, it's, it's nice to have control and know, uh, you know, who I want and where I can put them. And, and I think uh, we had a real good recruiting season this summer, and I think you're starting to see some of the benefits of that on the ice. Uh, Gage, talk about some of the personal goals for you this season. What do you want to do in terms of getting better? Uh, you know, we got a, I got a line that I'm playing with every night, and we're just trying to get better as a line and, uh, I guess, be a leader. You know, last year I wasn't recognized as a leader in terms of a letter on my jersey, but I tried to be one of the, the leaders as a rookie, and uh, this year just taking the next step as a vet. All right, we got some Twitter questions. Uh, first one's from at T. Benz. Ask them if DeVries will crack 100 this season. 
Well, I think he's playing for the Smithers Steelheads, uh, and it would not surprise me at all to see him crack 100 points. Uh, you know, Brendan was a great player to coach, and obviously we wish he was still eligible to play here this year, but you know, he's back at home. He's doing some scouting for us up north and hopefully find us the next Brendan DeVries. All righty. Uh, at MF Barry 60 asks, ask Gage and Coach Stowe what it means to the team and play in front of those big crowds in Campbell River. Uh, Campbell River, of course, has the biggest crowds in the VI. Talk about that. I think Gage could probably touch on a little bit better than I can, but I know for me, even as a coach, I mean, I get goosebumps in the stands seeing uh, – Seeing what they're like, I mean, it's 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 like having an extra man. There's no question about it. The guys come ready to play, and we really want to make it a real difficult place to play. And I think at three and zero right now, we've done that at home. Yeah, talk about playing in front of those large crowds, Gage. It makes it feel like it's the first game of the season every year. Like you come out just excited to play, and you look at all the guys. They're all paying attention. It's it's a good crowd, and it's not only big, but they're, you know, they're loud, and it's always fun to play in front of. All right, and lastly, uh, last question. Jesse Black underscore fourteen asks Gage, what made you choose the Campbell for Storm? Uh, Lee had recruited me out of his Soyuz and uh, he had watched me closely that year and he had good things to say and uh, you know I just thought I'd go on a limb, try the VIJHL and I heard good things and I, uh, I'm really happy that I did it. Awesome, well thank you gentlemen, good luck this season. We're not passing to the game of the week, the Victoria Cougars taking on the Comox Valley Glacier Kings. The Cougars are able to put it back down into the Comox zone. Penalty over, Kretschmar out on the ice. And that was massive interference and no call there. Stoltz in his own end to Kretschmar. Even strength, five on five. Here's Zadra over the Comox line. He gets held up there as his defenseman. There's a shot of that scores! John Kretschmar and the Cougars take the lead. In front, then Shaw comes inside. Tried to get a shot away, but he was met with Grant Payne's arm. Hamilton right side in the circle. Minute 56 to go. Pause. Hamilton again. Winds up. Fakes it. Carson out of position. And there's a goal. Pause with the shot. I think it's now time for news and roster moves in the Vancouver Island Junior Hockey League. Starting off with trades first, the Sanders Braves made a very busy team this past week. First off, getting goaltender Brandon Worf from the Nanaimo Buccaneers. Then getting Curtis Coburn from the Cary Park Islanders. They then moved Michael Frank to the Peninsula Panthers in exchange for Mitchell Newman. And then they shipped off Liam Cancella to the Victoria Cougars. That's all for trades in the VIJHL this week. Into roster moves, the Oceanside Journals have picked up defenseman Tanner Brown from the Okanagan Rockets. Last season, Brown played 40 games, totaling 5 goals, 17 assists for a total of 22 points and a total of 44 penalty minutes. He's a big guy, 5'11", 201 pounds. In suspension news, Kerry Park Islanders Lyndon Eddy has been suspended one game for receiving a game misconduct in the last 10 minutes of the game. In that same play, Curtis Coburn's also suspended one game for the San Andreas Braves, also getting a game misconduct in the last 10 minutes of the game. Marino Somerville, the Victoria Cougars, has been suspended three games in total, two games for a blow to the head, and one game for a game misconduct in the last 10 minutes of the game. That's all in suspension news in the VIJHL. Starting off on Wednesday night, the Peninsula Panthers lost to West Shore Wolves 6-2. On Thursday night, doubleheader here, Comox Valley Glacier Kings, Victoria Cougars, both tied in double overtime 1-1. The Camber Storm beat the Nanaimo Buccaneers 4-2 at the Nanaimo Ice Center. On Friday, the Oceanside Generals lost Camber River Storm 8-2. The Carrot Park Islanders beat the San Andreas Braves 6-3. And the Nanaimo Buccaneers beat the Peninsula Panthers 6-3 as well. On Saturday, the Comox Valley Glacier Kings beat the Peninsula Panthers 4-2. The Nanaimo Buccaneers beat the Oceanside Generals Oceanside Place 5-3. And the West Shore Wolves beat Kerry Park Islanders in overtime 4-3. And lastly on Sunday afternoon, one game on tap in Kerry Park. The Islanders beat the Oceanside Generals 4-1. Great, thanks to Lee Stone and Gage Coleman for being our guests on tonight's show. Next week, we introduce our brand new segment called Rapid Fire. You don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching. This was Inside the VI. 